This is a first on the Front Stretch podcast. We got a husband and wife duo and a badass one at that. Stuart and Jessica are on the show this week. Of course, you guys know they're making their truck series racing debut on the Bristol dirt track along with everybody else. But guys, you guys are making history because you're the second ever husband and wife duo to run in a NASCAR National Series race. This is nothing new to you guys because you do this on a regular basis. But in terms of NASCAR, this is pretty groundbreaking, I would say. You guys excited? Yeah, for sure. We're super excited. I mean, like you said, we do it a lot. We race against each other, but not quite at this uh, level, at this stage, mm -hmm. um, with as much attention. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, having Jessica as a teammate, you know, the past couple of years on our modified team has been awesome. And, uh, you know, really excited to uh, bring her on board HFR and our NASCAR team and, uh, you know, see what we can do. Is it weird calling your wife or your husband a teammate or is that just like you guys used to it now? Um, I don't know. It's a little different. I, I think we're used to it. We're, we're kind of life teammates. Uh, we made that decision years ago. Yeah. Uh, so to be, to be <laughs> racing teammates on top of it is, uh, is pretty cool. Yeah, bad decision by you, Jessica. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so how, how did this opportunity to run together in this race come about? I mean, this is for either of you guys, because as we mentioned, you know, you guys do this on a regular basis with the modified team, but doing it in trucks is something that hasn't been done in years, maybe ever. So what kind of sparked the interest for both of you guys? Well, just on the team standpoint, um, you know, having the equipment, uh, the resources available, and the manpower to do it. You know, we, we started our own team obviously a year ago or a little over a year ago now. And uh, the truck that Jessica is gonna run is, is one of the first ones that we acquired. Uh, we originally tried to build it into a Speedway truck. It was gonna take a lot more um, time than what we had already for Daytona uh, last year. And it just kind of, so it sat in the corner. And then, you know, with the schedule coming out this year with two dirt races, you know, we decided to build a second dirt truck. And then, you know, Chris Larson, um, you know, our partner and, and the owner of Hellmeyer International kind of got behind it and was like, you know, let's let's run another driver. And then we got kicking around driver. So why don't we just put Jesse in it? So uh, that, that's how it came about. And, uh, you know, Jess is, is obviously very marketable, um, was able to bring a lot more sponsorship on board between, you know, her sponsors, Corpac Merchandising, Parks Companies, and, and a whole host of other uh, partners. So um, it all came together, uh, you know, as a team owner, part of it, that's how it kind of came together. Um, but then, you know, having Jess as a teammate, it, it's going to be awesome. We'll be able to bounce a lot of, uh, a lot of different setup stuff and, um, you know, a lot of ideas off each other during the practice sessions Friday night. Jess, I'm curious for you, is it nerves, excitement, a little bit of both coming into this specific opportunity, one that you've never done before? How are you feeling? Um, obviously I'm very grateful for the opportunity of, of Helmar International, like giving me this chance to do this and, um, excited, uh, very excited, um, you know, never sitting in a truck before, uh, not having experience with, you know, something as heavy as the truck, but, um, you know, having the dirt experience, I think that'll help out. Um, and, you know, having Stuart to, to give me as much feedback and as much information. And, and we've already, you know, we spend our nights talking about the springs and talking about suspension and talking about, you know, things that, um, teammates need to talk about. And, uh, he's helped, you know, he's going to be having an earful every time we come off the track for sure as far as uh just picking his brain and learning and um you know i, I he's gonna be there to, to you know help out and point me in the right direction with a lot of things but um you know i think uh I, a little bit of nerves but a little bit more excitement um you know Stuart said to me a few times you know no pressure like he said with our modified team we don't have a you know a full time we have one full time guy and for when we run two cars it's a little bit it's a little bit much so if we tear mm -hmm. up anything on either car it's stressful and we're usually fixing it ourselves but the truck yeah. team we have a, a, a real team with hfr you know like a a lot of guys a lot of um knowledgeable guys like we have good equipment um you know hfr has gotten very well established in the last year so um stewart's been saying to me no pressure no pressure at all so uh, i'm just kind of going and sticking with that outlook and going to have some fun that's a good mindset to have i like that and also i mean from the outside looking in, a lot of the drivers that we've heard from over the last couple months in preparation for the weekend are basically saying, yeah, I'm trying to get as much experience as I can. Obviously, the dirt guys are going to have a, a leg up on us. So in a way, you guys are, are really like already ahead of some of the top tier teams in the truck series. And Stuart, for you making your cup debut as well. I mean, you got a leg up on some of the really big names in this sport that are trying to scratch and claw for running in the dirt nationals or running in the truck race as well with you guys. So 
in that way, for both of you, I feel like you got to feel pretty good in terms of, you know, possibly getting a really good finish out of this thing, even though we have no idea what's going to happen because trucks. Aren't right. Yeah. Still, you, know, you know, definitely. We have, um, you know, we have some great resources. Like Jess said, we have great guys. You know, if she knocks a fender off it in practice, no big deal. We can fix yeah. it. Um, we have a great notebook uh, coming off Eldora the last, you know, we ran the last four races there. So that's something we can, we can kind of rely on obviously having Jess as a dirt driver with her background in sprint cars and modified. She knows how to read a track. She knows, you know, where to position the car. She knows where the grip's going to be, where it's not going to be. So, Hopefully that's, that's all the stuff that, that we can kind of arm ourselves with to have a little bit of a leg up and, you know, but you never really know. So, um, that, that's the homework and that's, that's the background that we've done to, to try to be ready, uh, make Jess as, as comfortable as possible. Uh, a friend of ours, Ivan Jocelyn races a pro stock at Fonda Speedway was, was cool enough to let Jess make some hot laps in his car cool. down at Georgetown Speedway in Delaware last weekend, which which I feel is, is pretty similar, you know, um, a, a lot heavier car than what she's used to sitting on the left side. So, uh, she looked really good doing that, um, in and out of the car. So, um, you know, that, that, that's some good, <laughs> good experience. I think that, that she can take into it, obviously not being able to test the truck kind of mm -hmm. stinks, um, even as a rookie. So that's, that, that's, the, that's the background. We've kind of, like I said, we've armed ourselves, as much as we possibly can, we feel, and uh, and then we'll just go there and, and hopefully some of it pays off. I drive by Georgetown Speedway whenever I head down to the beach, and I've never actually gotten able to go see a race there because ever since I've dri driven by, it's during COVID. But the fact that you guys drove down there and got the test there, that's pretty cool. So hopefully maybe I'll be able to see you guys down there at, uh, at some point. Yeah, you got to check it out. Georgetown's uh, quite the place. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, too. I mean, th this is going to make for some good pictures and some good, like, scrapbook material this weekend. You guys got to take some really nice pictures, hang them up on your wall, look back in, like, 20, 30 years when you guys probably are actually going to still be racing. But be like, hey, remember <laughs> the Bristol Dirt Race? That was pretty badass. And, like, I'm sure your kids will be looking at that, too, and saying, and wow, mom story. and dad did that. Yeah. I, I also get the sense, though, like, you guys have done this for so long. So it's not really groundbreaking for you guys specifically because this is just what you do. But you understand how people see it as that and you understand that it is a pretty big deal in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I mean, to us, uh, you know, we both grew up in racing. We both grew up racing go-karts and modifieds. And, you know, we had one of our first dates at a driver's meeting, you know, when we were racing uh, both at the same track in uh, 2004. Uh, Stuart it. won the track championship with a modified and I won it with a sportsman. and. Uh, we've just done it together, our entire uh, relationship and our, you know, entire lives we've done it. And we were able to, you know, to do it now as a family and to have our son Parker included and, and to have him um, so interested in it and so into it. And um, I haven't raced as much, you know, since we started a family and we started a business. And so just now, you know, Parker's five and he's doing, he's doing amazing. Um, he was diagnosed on the autistic spectrum um, at a year and a half. So he, the last four and a half years have been very intense. Uh, ABA therapy um, it's taken a lot of time and it's, you know, his, the focus has been on Parker and Stuart's kind of had the, you know, I've been, you know, Stuart's the, the, the breadwinner and Stuart's the one who uh, he's, you know, supported the family and gone out and raced and done this as a career and done very well at it. And um, been fortunate enough to, you know, get hooked up with Helmar International and Chris Larson and, you know, to build this whole team and to, you know, kind of build our lives into what it is now. And uh, we have, you know, our, our business also. And um, now that our son Parker's, you know, doing amazing and responded so well to the therapy and finally, like, you know, I, it's, you know, I can get back into it a little bit more and get some more races in and do what I love to do and have him be involved in it and have him love it just as much as we do is awesome. So we're really looking forward to, you know, being able to do this together. That's great to hear. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you walked in and sat down, you know, somebody's got to work around here in this family. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the screen printing shop right now. No, Jess has done excellent. <laughs> um, you know, we started this business somewhat together uh, in 2015, just before we had Parker. And then uh, since then, she's just been 100% um, with this. And I've been able to kind of back away from it a little bit, which is cool. But no, she's built this thing into to to really a, a great business and done a great job with it. And uh, I'm really proud of her because of that. And, you know, now that everything's, you know, running well, Parker's, like she said, is responding well to therapy and, and um, we'll, we'll hit kindergarten next year, you know, at full speed, like every other, everybody else. And, um, you know, now she can really 
sink her teeth back into racing a little bit and, and we're excited for that too that's great to hear yeah you guys are building an empire over there but uh for for people that may not know can you tell us a little bit about the business that you guys do run and where you are right now uh we're in upstate new york uh Sprakers, new york um we have a screen printing and embroidery business um we started the business really mostly to do our own spring printing, our racing t-shirts. And then mm -hmm. we branched out and done a lot of businesses and other racers and um, it's been really busy. It's a very small business. Um, we don't have any full-time employees, so it's uh, sometimes very stressful, but it also helps to, you know, be able to schedule work and schedule, um, you know, when we need to take off to go racing and yeah. or when we need to take off for Parker and for Parker's therapy, or if the therapist is coming in the middle of the day and we have to go pick them up at pre-K and come home for OT therapy or, you know, so it's, um, we, we built this business. We started it knowing that we wanted to start a family and I wasn't going to be able to race as much. And, you know, we, um, built it as that. And then when we had Parker and, you know, with some of the obstacles, um, it's just kind of worked out. So we, um, we kept it basically pretty small, but, uh, it's very busy all the time. Um, and we're busy not only with our, our own stuff, but uh, other racers and other, um, companies. Um, and... yeah, it's, it's been good. You know, we, we wanted to start something, you know, racing might not, uh, be a, be an income for us forever. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, we wanted to start something that we could always fall back on and, uh, it's been an equally full-time job, you know, for <laughs> Jess, uh, since we started, but she's done a great job and, and, you know, I'm proud of her and, um, she's got, she got quite a, uh, quite a, quite a business here going. So, um, it's cool. Yeah. You guys are killing it. I, I always say it's better to be busy than bored, but that doesn't mean that it's less stressful. So it's exactly. kind of a catch 20 <laughs> yeah. type of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you guys had a funny story that you told yesterday um, on the big media availability um, when you told Parker that, uh, Jess, that you were going to be racing. His reaction was a little bit funny. Do you mind sharing that again? Yeah, um, we talked about how, uh, you know, he mentioned, you know, Parker, next week, mom and dad are both going to run the truck. And he's like, whoa, whoa, mom, no, dad races the truck. You run the modified. And I'm like, well, actually, buddy, this race is going to be a little bit different because we're going to race the trucks on the dirt. And he's like, whoa. No, 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 no. Trucks don't race on the dirt. Trucks race on the pavement and the modifieds race on the dirt. And then one of his first questions is always, is it going to take for a long time to get to this racetrack? <laughs> That's always one of his first questions too. Um, but he's has not wrapped his mind around uh, racing the trucks on the dirt or mom racing a truck at all. So it's going to be interesting. I love that. Well, I mean, honestly, he's pretty pretty much saying what all NASCAR fans thought when they announced it. I mean, so yeah. he's yeah. he's he's with everybody on there, so he's he's got a good head on his shoulders for sure. Um, a couple more questions for you, Stuart. You're making your Cup debut this weekend as well. Curious how that specific opportunity came about with Spire, and uh, was that something that you were actively seeking out? Did they seek you out? How did that come together? We had we had talked to a couple of different teams. Um, you know, Helmar was was big on on trying to get in to do something. You know, obviously coming off Eldora and and and, and being a dirt track race team mm -hmm. up here in the Northeast, that's something um, Chris was excited about. And you know, like I said, we talked to a couple of different teams, and a friend of mine, Glenn Sullivan, gave me uh, TJ Pusher's number from Spire. And you know, we went down there and met uh, when I was in North Carolina a couple. Well, about a month ago now, Trip Bruce and I mm -hmm. went down and met with TJ and and talked to him and then. Um, it just kind of kind of came together really quickly, but it was it was been really uh, a really comfortable experience. TJ and Jeff have been awesome. Uh, Kevin Bellacourt, being the crew chief, is somebody that I've known a bunch of years now after we worked together uh, when he crew chief, crew chief Justin Haley at GMS. Yep. So it's uh, it's been a great um, you know just a great deal working together with these guys. They've been they've been awesome. They're a, they're a smaller cup team, obviously, but uh, you know they have aspirations of getting bigger and better. So hopefully we can we can have a good run with the 77 car um and then not only do good with the 77 but help you know Corey joy uh you know right. have being a, being a pavement guy not a dirt track guy but make help him have a good run uh at bristol too so like i said there's some notes that that hopefully will apply from eldora to just kind of some you know baseline setup stuff mm -hmm. um obviously kevin was there with, with justin and and uh justin's been gracious enough to to you know kind of give us the seat and uh you know he's a good friend of mine so um, he's done excellent in the 77. So hopefully we can have a good run and then, you know, turn the reins back over to him for, for the rest of the year. And, um, yeah, but no, it's been, been really cool. Um, Spire, they're, they're a great team, great guys, really cool. They work out of the old Alan Kowicki shop down there in Charlotte. And it's, yeah. that was cool to kind of check out. And uh, I appreciate that history. And, 
And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a, it's a dream come true, obviously to be at this level and uh, you know, thanks to them, thanks to Helmar and, and I'm looking forward to it. For sure. Gonna, gonna be fun to see you make your cup debut there. I know everybody will, will be watching intently. Uh, last thing in terms of the, the track and the race itself, and either of you guys can take this one, you know, a lot of people and seat time is seat time for sure. But a lot of people say, you know, the dirt modified does not really compare to a heavy 3,500 pound stock car or a truck that's going to be racing on this surface. You guys don't know because you haven't taken laps in, in the big heavy truck or car yet. But knowing your background, you have a lot of experience on this type of track and not this track specifically, but you got to leg up. So do you have any idea what to expect when you get in the truck and Stuart, you get in the cup car and you're making laps around Bristol on dirt. Do you have any idea what it's going to feel like, or is it going to be a totally foreign unknown thing? Because this has never happened before. Yeah. I think, you know, taking, taking that outdoor experience and trying to apply it first, right. And, and use what mm -hmm. we know there. Um, and then what we know about uh, red clay, you know, Jess has raced a lot, you know, in, in Southern Pennsylvania and in, in the Southeast on red clay. So she knows what that grip level is. Um, how it changes. I think it'll be a little bit more abrasive and, and generate a little bit more tire heat than what Eldora uh, did the past couple of years, you know, being more of a black clay and a little bit more glazy slick. Uh -huh. um, you know, so, so that experience being able to read the track, uh, read where the grip is as the track changes. Uh, you know, I think that's, that's something that, that will both have a little bit of a leg up. We hope, um, you know, over some of the other teams, but um, you know, it, it kind of remains to be seen, but, but that's the, that's the experience we're going to tap into uh, getting into it. I just, as far as comparing Bristol to like another dirt track, we, you know, we, the only thing we really can, you know, Lebanon Valley, um, just east of Albany, we, it's a mm -hmm. high bank, fast mm -hmm. um, track. So uh, as far as like the banking and stuff, we have both run the modified and the sprint cars on that track. And that would probably be the most similar track that we could go to, but obviously yeah. the, the clay and the surface is going to be a lot different. And the, the truck compared to the modified and the, and the sprint car is going to be a lot different, but um, yeah, it's just, um, We'll be all right. I think you'll be all right. Yeah. I was even going to ask too, like if, if Jess, you've done any sim time, but I don't really think you need it. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I, I've never been in a real sim, but as, as right. far as I racing goes, I'm absolutely terrible. And I start throwing things and I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any patience. I'm not very good at no. it. Um, yeah. Stuart has a lot more patience when it comes to it. And I, I get frustrated and mad. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Short fuse. I'm the same way. I'm terrible at it, but good thing I don't run. I, I don't drive race cars. I hold a microphone for a living. So. <laughs> um, all right. Last thing. You guys are teammates in life and on the track now, but when it comes down to it, you know, I was going to ask this, right? If one of you is first, one of you is second coming through three and four to the checkered flag, would you move the other person to win? <laughs> Uh, Parker does. Parker's, yeah. uh... No, I, absolutely. If we can be in that situation, um, you know, we're going to race each other just as hard as we'd race anybody else. Mm -hmm. And that's, and, and you know, uh, on the team, you know, owner aspect of it, that's all Chris Larson would ask of us uh, just to race as hard as we possibly can. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully we don't wreck each other and one of us ends up with a win, maybe, you know, if it ever got into that situation. But yeah, um, no, Jess is just as competitive as anybody. I've seen her you know, rough people up after the checkered spin people out when, when they did her dirty. So, um, you know, I, I think we'll, we'll race just as hard as we can, you know, we'll work together up to that point to, to try to get both trucks fast. And then, uh, then, then all bets are off. It's a good thing. We have some spare bedrooms in our house. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I mean, I know you guys, you're not going to take shit from nobody, even each other. Okay. So I, I have no doubt about that. Um, well guys, this has been really fun. I thank you for your time. I know you're busy. Um, so best of luck this upcoming week at Bristol in the truck and Stuart, you in the cup car as well. And, uh, you. hopefully you won't be using those spare bedrooms, but I don't know. <laughs> I, part, part of me really wants to see Jess just spin you out, Stuart. That's just, me right. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks guys. I'm sure you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Thank thanks, you. David. Yeah. See you, man.